I feel like a kid in the candy store. I am at Saracenia Northwest with Jeff, the owner. And Jeff, this is a wonderland of carnivorous plants. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. How many different plants do you have? Oh gosh, just in different varieties here. I'm sure we have probably uh, you know a couple hundred different wow. types um, that are here, but they're they're in different large groups of, of you know varieties of plants. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. And so you have them outside, which I would never think about leaving them all outside. And I see Venus flytraps, where usually you see them indoors. So give us a little information about that. The Venus flytrap is probably one of the most misunderstood plants that's out there. I would say as far as plants go, carnivorous plants or otherwise. Um, but the Venus flytrap is a U.S. native. They're found along. <laughs> the coastline of North and South Carolina, their winters get as cold as ours do. And because of that, and the Venus flytrap is actually a hardy perennial, it does best as an outdoor container plant here in the Northwest. Wow. I'm sorry, but folks want to have it in the house, that's just not a good place to have it. It's kind of like trying to grow strawberries in the house. Oh, that would be nice too, so you're <laughs> right. And really, they're pretty easy. This is the full sun. I mean, they're sitting in water, but it's that easy. Once you understand their basics, they're not complicated plants. Yeah, they are bog plants. They like to be quite wet, so sitting in shallow trays of water. Um, definitely full sun. There are very few carnivorous plants that are shade tolerant, um, so they all want to be out in the open. And and for the majority of the American varieties, like the Venus flytrap and some of the pitcher plants we're going to look at, they're going to stay outside all year. They'll just need a little bit of extra protection during certain parts of the winter. Wow, wow. And then I saw you have sundews, so tell us a little yes. bit about those. Sundews are sticky plants. They have little leaf hairs that have been modified in the, with glands that have little droplets all over them. And so an insect, if they are attracted to it, they light on it, they get stuck, and if the insect can't pull itself free, the little hairs will start to bend and fold in onto the insect to digest it. Wow. And so <laughs> really we don't have to feed them then, right? <laughs> what, what insects are for carnivorous plants is fertilizer. It's, ah. it's not energy the way people think of like animals eating for energy. And right. so they're regular plants in every single way. They simply got this weird way they're getting fertilizer. <laughs> and then I saw you also have Darlingtonias, the cobra lilies. Yeah, and that's our, that's our one west coast native pitcher plant. Those can be found in southern Oregon and northern California. And they're usually found, most people know about the coastal colonies down around Florence. But there's also um, an awful lot of them that grow in the Siskiyou Mountains in uh, Southern Oregon, wow. Northern California. They often grow on spring seeps um, in the Siskiyous. Um, unfortunately, they're one of the more challenging carnivorous mm. plants to grow to, even though they are a native. Those are very cool. Mm -hmm. Very interesting the way they're hooded. Oh, nothing looks quite like one at all. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then another really interesting one are the pitcher plants. So let's mm -hmm. walk over here. You bet. Wow, there's so many colors. I would have never thought so many different colors. And what we're looking at here are Saracenia. These are pitcher plants from the East Coast. And the taller ones are kind of collectively referred to as trumpet pitchers many times. And then there's kind of Haydn over here. I see him with the fern in that. There's one that's called a purple pitcher, which is actually where the name pitcher plant comes from because it looks like a little pitcher with a handle um, in there. And it catches rainwater inside there to, to drown its bugs. But uh. the other ones, um, amazing colors, unbelievable bug catchers. People <laughs> will sometimes ask me, you know, what's, what's the best fly catcher? Oh, these things hands down oh. of, of any plant that we grow. Oh, so we should so. put it next to our deck for the mosquito problem. If you've got a sunny <laughs> spot and you can provide a trail of water, it's a great place for one. Uh, mm -hmm. And can you show us the flowers? Because they're so unique in themselves. They're beautiful. These are the floral structures you can see like right here. We have a couple among these two different plants. Now this one still has a few petals on it and those are just getting ready to drop. Usually early June is the beginning of our blooming time. But um, these, these still have the sepals on them. This sort of umbrella-like structure that's on here is all part of the pistil. And then you can see that um, big ball in the center. That's the ovary or the seed pod. And that's going to open up in September with a whole bunch of seeds in there. Wow, that is. So tell us again how easy it is to take care of them. Again, just a shallow tray of water, a sunny exposure for them. They're going to stay outside if you're here in the northwest, west of the Cascades, um, pretty much all year. Um, and they um, need very little. Their soil media is different than other plants. They grow in peat moss. They're not okay. growing in regular soil. One of the trade-offs for being a carnivorous plant is that you're used to growing in extremely nutrient-poor soil, no nitrogen. Oh. And if you try to put them in nice, rich soil, it kills them. Oh, okay. Oh, so. Really good tips. And then how can we find these plants to take home? where you can find them. Um, we are still vending at the Beaverton Farmers Market, so in, in uh, May and June we can be found there. Um, if you also go to our website at growcarnivorousplants.com, um, we can order plants off the website, and during the summertime we also have open houses, the nurseries. So if you'd like to come out and visit us, we'd love to have you. Oh, you have to come out here. It is amazing. So please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over their website, and you can have carnivorous plants at your home. Thanks so much. <laughs> You're welcome.